today is the big day. Creative 2.0 is finally here. And with this new generation of Fortnite Creative comes the Unreal Editor for Fortnite, which I was fortunate enough to be invited by Epic to be an alpha tester to see what is possible and what is not. Can you customize guns? Is it available in consoles? Is first person a thing? And much more. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. The Unreal Editor Fortnite is a version of the Unreal Engine, meaning that interfaces, shortcuts and naming works almost identically. That obviously doesn't mean that UEFN is the same as the Unreal Engine. The main difference being that the Unreal Editor of Fortnite works directly with Fortnite, therefore opening gameplay inside of Fortnite. And instead of making gameplay inside Blueprints or C++, you will be able to use the Fortnite devices and Epic's new programming language Verse. While there are still a few bits and pieces of Blueprints like Blueprint Classes, which for example allow you to create custom props which you then can move inside of Fortnite with the existing Creative 1.0 tools, and also for example Blueprint Widgets which allow you to create interfaces, even though it's a little bit more cut down than the Unreal Engine version. One of the biggest questions which I saw floating around was if you can edit weapons, add weapons, or in general, edit existing Fortnite gameplay. The unfortunate answer to this is not currently. UFN doesn't let you edit existing player characters or existing weapons, the way it would normally be done inside the Unreal Engine. That obviously doesn't mean that you cannot create cool and unique ways to play the game or create shooting mechanics, but currently there's for example no way to change an existing fire rate for a gun that was given by Fortnite. Nonetheless, UFN has very similar options when it comes down to importing assets. So if you want to import your own weapons, you can do that. You cannot attach them to your characters, but you can import anything that you basically want, as long as it fits the criteria. Obviously one criteria being that it is a correct format that UFN supports, but the other one is a bunch of criteria which basically ensure that Fortnite can still run well if you import your asset and put it into your game. For example, having texture sizes only up to 2K, having less than 20K vertices, and just a few of those things would just make sure that even the Switch can handle your assets. Another very cool option is that you can migrate assets from the Unreal Engine, which means basically you copy over stuff that is already existing in the Unreal Engine, and you can copy copy it over to UEFN. Obviously, if there's something that is not supported inside UEFN, for example, blueprints or physics assets, then these will just be marked and you have to delete them. Otherwise, your game will probably have some problems running. In the end, every map has to go through a moderation process if you want to publish it. So anything that is not allowed in Fortnite will be sorted out anyways. So you can try to import everything that you want, but there will be a moderation process anyways. A big question which I saw floating around a lot is if you can make a first person mode. I would say technically, yes, but it is more so the old way of creating a first person than it is the correct way of how you would do it in the Unreal Engine. Since we cannot go into the character blueprints, we can also not change the camera and we can also not manipulate the camera in any way that we can maybe switch from first person to third person or the other way around. But you can add cameras to your scene and you can play in these cameras, you can create full cinematics and all that kind of stuff. I've seen some really cool stuff being done with Verse and I wouldn't wonder if someone can maybe glitch around the system a little bit, but the current way and how you would do it is with the helipad. Huh? It might sound a little bit confusing to someone that never touched Fortnite Creative before, but the way people used to create the first person mode was with an helipad that had an interesting collision which forced the camera into first person. But since now every prop is scalable to your liking, you can scale it as big as you want and you only need one, you do not need to copy multiple ones. But still, this is currently the only correct way of creating a first person mode. The question that bad creators since the beginning of Fortnite Creative, are there still memory limits and just limits in general and how does that work now? Yes, the memory limit still exists and yes, it is still 100k. But there is a second limit inside UEFN which is also kinda important. How you can think of these two is that the in-game one basically shows you how good your game is performing and the other one is just showing how big your assets are. It is also very important to understand that just because you maybe have a low project size, that doesn't particularly mean that your game runs very well or is still under 100k. For example, the Fortnite devices rarely take up any project size, but if you go in-game, the memory is going up. So just keep in mind that you could be under the project size, but still are very much over the size of the memory in-game, which will obviously then not allow you to publish the game. And before you ask the question in the comments, Yes, this is about a BR size island of 2.5 kilometers. And it takes about 4% of your project size and about 1.3K of your memory. So it's quite doable. But on the other side, there are three modes which basically feel limitless. 
and these almost work one to one as they do in the Unreal Engine. UFN comes with three extra modes which are modeling, landscapes and animations. Modeling, aside from a few minor details, work exactly like they do in UE5. However, even though it's called modeling, UE5 users know that these are mainly used for blocking out a level instead of detailed modeling. Recommended workflow would still be using another software like Blender to create detailed models. The landscaping mode or for the Fortnite creators, the terrain editing works also very similar to the one in UE. A few key differences are obviously that we do not have blueprints, but other than that, they work very similar. And the animation mode works hand in hand with the control rigs, which are also enabled in UEFN. Other things which work very similar to the Unreal version of these are the materials inside UFN and Niagara, which is the VFX slash particle system inside the Unreal Engine. The biggest and most important question is probably, but how do you even create gameplay if you cannot use blueprints or C++? As said earlier, Fortnite devices are still a thing and they are actually very important. Matter of fact is you can probably create your full gameplay with just these devices. You technically also do not have to use Verse whatsoever if you don't want to. The Fortnite devices will still be fine, but Verse obviously gives you a lot more options. It's obviously a little bit more free when it comes down to creating gameplay. But how does it work for someone who never touched Fortnite before? You would basically start out the same way as you would do in the Unreal Engine. You get the animation, either you import it or you create it yourself. Then you want to take out the Fortnite device. In this case, this would be the animation device. You're gonna put in the correct mesh and animation that you want to play. Make sure that you have an action where the animation is going to be played. So for example, if a player wants to enter an area, you need to use the mutator zone, which for Unreal Engine devs, this would be a collision box which automatically detects players moving in or out. Then you basically link these two up together. And like that, you created a gameplay element inside Fortnite Creative. This is obviously very comparable to UE Blueprints and as in the Unreal Engine, you can also use the UFN's version of C++, which would be Verse. For the last and final topic, we probably move on to the most criticized and discussed topic in Fortnite Creative's history, is how to share and publish creations. And I'm glad to say that from my understanding, these old limitations do not exist anymore. There are other limitations because from now on, Publishing maps is 18 plus, and that is technically the only requirement. If you are 18 plus and you are enrolled in the program, you are be able to publish a map via number generated code as it was before in Fortnite. For everyone that is under 18, we have to wait a little bit for Epic if they clarify if, for example, your parents can enroll you. But other than that, these old limitations are technically gone. And that obviously begs the question, who can play UFN maps and who can create UFN maps? The great thing about UFN that it's made so everybody can play every map that is created in UFN, in normal creative. However, not everybody can create maps, especially not in UFN. The normal creative mode still exists and you can still normally play creative and create maps in creative 1.0, but if you want to use the UFN editor, you need to have a PC. I'm not 100% sure if, for example, GeForce Now, which is obviously a cloud service, will allow to have the UFN launcher, which then obviously gives the option to a lot more people that maybe do not have a good PC to also run UFN. And just like that, it wraps up the list of things that you should do before you start UFN. And now enjoy the future of Fortnite. Obviously throughout the next months, there will be coming a ton of tutorials and guides. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys back in the next one.